big Irish families are mostly a thing of the past. But surely grey partridges buck that trend. With up to 25 chicks, that makes them one of the biggest families in the bird world. But that didn't keep them from becoming one of the rarest resident birds in the country. But two fiercely dedicated men, Kieran Buckley and Paddy Kelly, have battled to change all that. They have achieved one of the greatest conservation successes I have witnessed anywhere in the world. And it all takes place in Bura, County Offaly. This is a cutaway bog, an area where peat has been extracted. But the Grey Partridge Trust have transformed this desert-like place into a wildlife haven. It's now May and all the female partridges are sitting on their eggs and completely hidden from view. But the males can be spotted keeping guard sentry-like and it's Kieran's job to keep an eye on them all. He does everything he can to ensure that the breeding season goes well, and placing hoppers full of wheat in every partridge territory is one way of doing that. So what changed the partridge's fortunes? After the 1950s, the farmland ecosystem started to collapse all hay meadows were dug up and extensive farming, mixed farming practices ended. So the partridge, the habitat that the partridges needed actually uh, started to um, more or less evaporate. The numbers crashed very, very quickly because they're a very short-lived bird. They only have really one reproductive effort in their life. Once the coast is clear, the male calls his hungry mate off the nest. Her eggs are now unguarded and vulnerable. Now if this wheat wasn't here, she would have to forage for perhaps half an hour. Now, in just a few minutes, she can obtain all the nutrition she needs to keep her going for a whole day, and she can return to her nest to protect her eggs in the shortest time possible. Now, once those eggs hatch, the family will be able to forage naturally. And that's because Kieran has created 2,000 acres of the kind of mixed farm habitat that would have been commonplace 50 years ago. Then, plants like kale, lucerne and linseed and all sorts of weeds would have been abundant. And that's why the partridge were too. We provide summer for them to nest, somewhere for them to bring their chicks, brood rearing cover, and then somewhere to give them cover and food over winter. So the three, they're the three key habitat requirements of partridges. But nothing is left to chance, and Kieran has another trick up his sleeve. Every year, a number of birds are trapped in the wild and brought into captivity where they go through the normal breeding process. And in a situation that mirrors the wild exactly, the male keeps a watchful eye on the incubating female. She has been sitting here for the last 24 days under the watchful eye of Paddy Kelly, who is a captive breeding expert. I've come to join him as he thinks the first clutch of the season has just hatched. Here we go. Are they all hatched, Paddy? Yeah, I think they're all hatched, Colin. Just checking the remaining egg, it's not pipped. Not pipped, what does that mean? That was pipped, cracked here. There was a chick in it, trying to get out, but it's not, right? Okay. So there's nothing in that egg. It's there's nothing in that, okay. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there's a couple more in there. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, another one. Keep them calling, Colin. Look at them. I mean, they're like, the, they're like the little Easter chick, aren't they? The ones you put in your cake. Look at that. Yeah. Oh. You'd never tire looking at them, would you? Oh, never. Oh, they're beautiful. 
In you go. That's what it's all about. Like, I'm at 11 year now, I'm down here, working on the Grey Patrick's project. 11 year. It took me 11 year to learn. I've kind of learned myself. Yeah. Like, you know, I started off with birds. Actually, my mother got me into chickens, right? I always kept a few chickens. I used to look after them. Had a great interest, always had. I worked on a farm when I was about 10 years of age. Yeah. Farmer had a few chickens, used to let me look after them because I had the interest, you know? But I still love what I'm doing here, you know what I mean? Really yeah. enjoy it. Love working with the birds. So I'm going to drop them in nice and cushy. Specially designed food pellets will keep these little guys going. But in the wild, each chick would naturally consume more than a thousand creepy crawlies each day for the first two weeks of their lives. So a wild family might consume more than 25,000 insects per day. So Kieran and his team regularly check the crops they planted to make sure the mix is just right and that insects are in abundance. No shortage here. Things are looking really good this year. Within a couple of weeks, the chicks will switch diet and start eating the crops themselves. But these planted strips provide another essential service. These brood rearing strips also provide great cover from predators as well because little partridge chicks to a, to a bird of prey might look like a little chicken nugget to you and me. So if there's 15 or 20 little chicken nuggets running around, obviously then it's very, very tempting. But if the chicken nuggets that I eat the chicks can get underneath, underneath the cover, they're safe. Keeping predator numbers down is an essential and not so pleasant part of Kieran's work, but it has to be done. As wildlife managers and managers of a ground nesting board, a rare ground nesting board, we're actually dealing with nature the way it is and not the way I would like it to be. So I have to deal with the, with the predators during, only during a certain time of the year, when, particularly when the partridges are breeding. So they're vulnerable at that, at that time of the year and not so vulnerable after that. The fact that the right habitat has been created and predators controlled means that other ground nesters, like the lapwing, benefit too. They are breeding really well here. This is what rural Ireland would have looked like and indeed sounded like not all that long ago. Some weeks later, and the first captive family is ready to be released back to the wild. Good to meet you. Yeah. Good to you? see you down here. Delighted to be here. How are you going, Kieran? Not too bad, not too Excellent. bad. Excellent. No. The rain could have held off a little bit. Yeah. This is Paddy Kelly. Paddy Kelly. This is John Gorman. Nice to meet you, John. This is right. captive breeding right. manager. Yeah. Right. The That's captive right. breeding man, which has been amazingly successful. When you visit the captive breeding project and you see all these birds in the cage, you can think they just look like chickens walking around. But they are fully wild. And yeah. when you get too near the cage, you see them hopping there, like they're very wild birds. So when we get over there, you have to keep it kind of quiet because mm. they get fairly, they can get stressed out. We want them to come out of that cage nice and slow, mm. and carefully. Yes. Okay. okay. Brilliant. Okay. Right. Hope all it right. goes according to plan. Quietly does it. Yeah. Quietly does it. Exactly. exactly. We were just up there and we saw. Oh, did there. you? Yeah, yeah. Just, ah, fantastic. It was almost on cue, you know. But, uh, fantastic, uh, fantastic. Quite amazing, fantastic. wasn't it? Yes, yeah. They must have yeah. known you were Skimming coming. Yeah. They kind of yeah. know that we're coming, but we seem to have the opposite effect on them. No, it was perfect. It was just, just very, very, very close to us too. Okay. This is, the, this is the box. Okay. So they're sitting in there. Okay. And uh, I pull the rope down here. Okay. okay. It's kind of like launching a ship. Okay. Except it's just barges that'll come out. My big moment. Absolutely. We're gonna wait for Kieran to get back. Okay. When you hold it, John. Right. Yeah, just hold it. Right. Over the next few weeks, more and more families were released to join the wild population. 
These birds look so healthy. Paddy has done an amazing job. These family units, or coveys as they are known, will stay together until late winter. In total, 917 chicks were released this year. But before partridges lay their eggs in the nest, they will sometimes drop an egg in different parts of their territory. No one's quite sure why. Now in the wild, these would go to waste. But the scattered eggs from the captive birds are cherished. The finest bantam hens are loaned to Paddy by his friend John Chambers every year, and they will act as surrogate mothers. Today is egg swap day. Look at the comparison, look. So when I'm putting in the eggs, they put my hand this way. If I put it this way, she might pick, she might crack an egg. And there we have the bantam set. 15 white grey partridge eggs. That's really it. Just put her back up here at the end of the coop. And leave her 24 days. Bit of luck. We'll have partridge. Well, oh, that's grand now. Later, that. A few weeks pass, and it's time to see if the bantam has done her job. Just hatching today. Look how small them birds are. Look. Three wild grey partridge chicks hatched under a bantam. Scattered eggs collecting the pens. Only hatching today. Look at the size of them. Look at the size of them. So I don't want to stop her too much. Say we may leave her alone. The bantams are doing really well this year and have hatched a total of 130 chicks that would otherwise have been lost. They treat the youngsters as if they're their own. She doesn't realise that these aren't her chicks and the chicks don't realise she isn't their mother. Generally we'll hold on to them three or four weeks, sometimes seven weeks. You know, I'm out of pens. Out of pens in the weather. Don't want them out in bad weather, like, you know, it's the last thing you can do. So, with these birds here, such out under the bottom. <laughs> Typical of Valley Kelly, isn't it? <laughs> Hello? Ah, oh, battery gone all right, yeah. Now, as Paddy was going to say, within a couple of weeks, these chicks will no longer need their foster mum, and that's because they don't need to be brooded. They're big enough to keep themselves warm. But if they were released into the wild on their own, they wouldn't stand a chance without firm parental guidance. And that's because they'd be really bad at finding food and hopeless at avoiding predators they have to be raised by wild parents. And that's not as improbable or as difficult as one may think. The orphan's calls have lured a wild bird. It's a male...